Hi everyone, this is Kyle with KDebate. I wanted to do the second part of my video on corruption. Um, and the first one talked to pretty much about personal corruption and what corruption was, and an example of the easy way it is to fall into it. Th this next one is about government corruption and the way it affects things and why it's so bad. Because personal corruption, you might affect, you know, the, the people around you and it's already bad enough. But generally it's more lifestyle it's like ah, i don't care and I'm, I'm gonna do what i want and a lot of people do that all the time anyway yeah i do consider that a form of corruption it's apathy and all those other things but I, I talked about that already but in government there are different kinds of the way people's minds work in groups uh, is actually really interesting especially when you get into the um you know when, when you get into like nazi germany or you get into uh into the, the, the ideas of, of communism or socialism and the, the different ways that it makes people act when the government or somebody in power starts saying how to act and it's so easy to follow sometimes and brainwashing and all those other things because there's different ways that you can become corrupted. Uh, a lot of people believe that it's just... Um, it's just the thing that everyone ha everyone's naturally corrupted. I mean, there's a, there's a couple of religions based around that almost entirely. But... This is about the government entities. This is about uh, people that are political or, you know, just powerful. And when you get into the idea of, because this is all anyone's talking about right now in the United States, uh, it's the elections, it's the president, it's the most powerful position in the United States, technically, uh, as far as anyone cares. And when you have people vying for power, when you have a group, like large groups, the Republican and Democratic they control the United States in, in the sense that they are the ones that are electing. Because you, right now you have, you, you have the, pretty much the GOP, um, and you have the Democratic just groups, and they hate each other. <laughs> they, they just, they're always fighting. Uh, the United States is very divided in what it believes we should be as a nation and what we should do as a nation. And the people, the normal person, you know, everyday, everyday Joe or whatever, uh, they have their own ideas as well, and theirs are all split all, all everywhere too. And they listen to the media, and the media tells people what to believe, and the media is generally either just outright believed or people are very, very skeptical of it. So you have the people that don't listen to the media at all and the people that religiously believe everything the media tells them. And I've been having discussions with people that are extremely liberal-minded talking about their extremely conservative parents. And that was an interesting conversation because they were talking about their conversations with them. I was like, that, 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 that's not good. That's really, really bad. <laughs> Don't say those kinds of things to your parents. Uh, they'll, they'll kick you out like, like uh, it may have happened to me, maybe. Uh, I, I'm not going to get into that. But there's a lot of... There's a lot of things that happen in the government that people just in the United States, just, yeah, our government's corrupt. It's just corrupt. Everyone, every single person. And I've actually, I grew up with the mentality that I wanted to become a politician. I wanted to become some kind of political figure when I was younger, when I was a teenager and whatnot. And my brother, my older brother, uh, just flat out told me I would be the most corrupt person ever. Uh, and he never really explained why. I, I, he just didn't like me, but... Um, so that's probably the reason, but I don't know. Um, but I don't believe corruption is based off of something so easy to quantify. If somebody's naturally greedy, they're definitely going to be on the road. that You can corrupt them easier if they're greedy. You can corrupt them easier if you have something they want. But everyone has something that they want. I want to help my friends. If somebody were to offer me this, this thing that would help my friends... Yeah, I would contemplate, I would consider, and that can be a way of corrupting me. Uh, I just recently finished watching the entire ser series, uh, season one and two of Gravity Falls. The newest episode came out uh, yesterday. And it has a very interesting concept of corruption uh, because it's these little, these little agreements. These, these, these really, they seem too good to be true sometimes, and then they usually are. And I, I don't, want to use references everywhere to things that people might not see but it's so easy to like i'll help you if you help me later i'll i'll scratch your back if you scratch mine and then you're like yeah i need this or my family needs this or i want this or my family wants this 
and you, you just make the deal and you don't think it's so bad and then it turns bad or you know you realize that it's much worse but you're already involved and now you can't back out and you know th this is this is the kind of slippery slope argument that actually happens sometimes is people will agree to something not understanding what it is and another friend uh, actually and I'm gonna get back into the government thing really quickly I just wanted to explain this one of my friends made an agreement with somebody to uh, do an art uh, an art gallery kind of thing for them they were gonna make art for this group and the group was going to feature all of the a whole bunch of different artists work uh, and they, they, that person was the first one to be asked. My friend was the first person to be asked, hey, do you want to do this thing? And they're like, yes, I'd love to be part of this. It's a large group of people. They're all artists. This will be a great way to get my work noticed and all the other things. And, or, and also, you know, free art for everyone. And then the people started charging for the art. They, they'd said, okay, months and months in the future. This is after everything had already been set up. We're going to charge for the art. Everyone is, you get, everyone gets money. They're not, they're not necessarily stealing from the artists. They're just saying, you know, we're going to take a cut, but we're going to give everyone, you know, everyone gets it. And because there's so many good artists, it's going to be, everyone's going to make a little bit extra money. My friend did not want that. He thought it was a free art pack, but he had already made the agreement before he knew what the, the criteria was. And then he found out that they were actually lying about how much money they were going to because they were charging for the money and they were saying where the money was going, but the money wasn't actually going there. It was like, oh, we need it for advertising or we need it for this or we need it for that. But it wasn't going to any of those things. There was no advertising. There was no budget for these kinds of things. No one was getting paid except for those people. So he was like, okay, I don't, I don't like this anymore. I don't want to be a part of this. And he was actually getting a lot of anxiety from it. And what happens when you get, I, I'm in too deep. I, I've already made the agreement and I would be wrong to back out of it. And I understand that mentality when I make a promise, when I make an agreement with somebody, I want to uphold my end even if it's difficult. But in his case, his agreement, and I've told, I, I explained this to him, your agreement was under the premise of what they gave. They changed it. And it, it, there is no moral argument against you saying, I am no longer comfortable with the terms that you have presented to me. And they have changed. There, there are, are new things to consider. And I didn't say just dump it. I said talk to them. If what they say is actually what is happening, then and because you can always, you know, you can always talk to somebody. It's like I don't feel comfortable anymore. Would you feel offended if I left? Because you can leave on bad terms. It's like ah, you know, blah 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 blah, and then run off the run off into the wherever you go. But. Uh, I think in the more amiable kind of uh, conversation would would be more helpful, and a whole bunch of people were you know on this conversation too because he has a lot of friends. But we were all pretty much saying the same thing: is if you don't feel comfortable with this, if you if you believe that they have either deceived or that you would not want to be associated with this group anymore, and it is causing you anxiety, to find a way to you know safely because you don't want to ruin your reputation to somebody that just ditches agreements uh, to somehow get out of this in, in a way that doesn't hurt everybody. And they, they actually agreed. Like, I don't want to do this. I don't feel good with this idea. Now, the reason I gave this example, um, because I think this is a very good example of when you make an agreement with something. And when you sign up for the Democratic or Republican parties, you're doing that. You're, you are saying, I idolize or I identify with this party and therefore I want to represent or be represented by or work for or work with these groups and then the group starts doing things you don't agree with and it's like well I still need their support I need it it helps me and that's what my friend was going through as well is like this would give this would give you know I was going to, he was going to donate his money anyway but uh, this this helps me as an artist this helps the people get more art because he thought it was free. It's like, I'm, I'm getting a whole bunch of different people into, the, into art. But when you sign up for either one, Republican or Democrat, you sign up for everything. You have to be part of the system. And that's one of the reasons people are getting sick of it now, is the system is broken because they don't work together and they generally backstab each other, which causes the common person, the person at the bottom, to suffer the most because you have conflicting information. You have, you know, one person trying to defund this or the other one's trying to fund it. So you have it funded for one year and then completely dismantled the next. And that causes a lot of loss, a lot of, a lot of just 
wasted effort and wasted materials. Like we built this giant building and now we're not going to ever use it again. And when you don't have a stable form of, you know, funding for an organization, say, uh, we have this, we have this, this kind of, um, thing you could sign up for. You can sign your business. Um, uh, uh, what was it? It was uh, a food drive kind of thing where every, sh- every shopping thing that has food must donate excess food to shelters. Pretty much. It's not giving it away, uh, cause you're going to throw it away. You're, 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 Instead of throwing it away, you must give it away. That's that's what I meant to say, and it's it's not a it's not a guaranteed thing. So why why not? Why should you not do this? No one has ever gotten sued because of it ever. I've looked it up. Uh, so why not? Well, it does exist, uh, but it's not. You have to pretty much opt into it, and you know the government gives you a little bit of money for it because you ha- still have to do transportation and storage and all those things because you don't just throw it at them. So you, you, if you don't sign up for it, you don't have to do it. But you kind of want to set up for it because it feeds people. People shouldn't starve. And unless you don't like homeless people, but I don't know. That, that's, a, that's on an individual basis. But the idea that the government doesn't just say feed the hungry, like we have the capability of doing that because, oh, they don't want handouts or whatever. You can have all the different arguments about that. That's, that's, a, that's a very philosophical, you know, should we feed them because then they will become dependent on us or should we teach them and let them feed themselves? Uh, but some people aren't capable of doing that. So, you know, some people, they don't have limbs. But... Uh, <clears throat> there's there's arguments that's a much larger argument and I'm not talking about that I'm talking about this one program that the government has that is not mandatory and I'm not saying if it should or not but I'm saying that some people want it to be mandatory and some people don't want it to be man- they want it to be gone forever and you have them clashing it's like we want to make it permanent and we don't so what we're going to do is we're going to make it kind of permanent and then take it away some years so that the people that opted into it now have this infrastructure designed around it, and now it's not there anymore, and they lose money. So they're not when it comes back, they're not going to opt into it again. It's like this is losing me money. I'm act- as a businessman, as somebody that's trying to make a profit, this is hurting them. So they're less likely to do it in the future. So you have this this kind of and again, some programs are bad. Some programs shouldn't exist, but that doesn't necessarily mean that. Uh, just the give and take, because a lot of people argue that the give and take is important to keep things balanced. Otherwise, one side will gain all the power, and then the other side will just lose everything, and now we'll have a corrupt system even more. But when the government is doing it for themselves, when when the people, because it's so easy to get trapped in this loop of I love this side and I hate that side, and now that side's changed, and this side, it's, it's annoying, but... When, when you're talking to people online about the government, you've already kind of lost because the people don't want to listen to it. But when you have when you have two groups, because you have the Democrats and the Republicans, and they're just arguing nonstop, the people get sick of it. And when the, the thing that people are getting sick at isn't necessarily their their, their arguments, their their you know the mudslinging and their whatever. It's the corruption. It's the idea that, and I, I tried to bring this back in, I tried to tie it back together, but it's kind of all loose ends everywhere. But when you have, like, it, we can have a two-tier system, a two-party system, um, but because of the corruption, it's dis, it's dismantling itself. It's, it's gaining more and more um, ridiculous levels of, you know, this side has millions and millions of dollars or billions of dollars pumping into this, this um, media sewage and the other side is trying to fight it so they have to pump in equal amount of money and all this misinformation is everywhere and people are just trying to grab as much people votes as they can and they're lying about things and they're 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 manipulating ideas or they're trying to run a campaign that is based off of manipulation tactics instead of and because it's more effective than being truthful um, and that's mainly the, that's the main reason, there's a lot of other reasons, why Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump are actually the very more popular, like, yeah, great grammar, but they're, they're, they're more popular than people ever expected them to be. Um, Bernie Sanders has always been arguing that, you know, the people need to stand up, grassroots, 
free education, free whatever, and, you know, socialist ideas, and then the other side's always, you know, when I say socialist ideas, I mean, technically, it is a socialist idea, but it's a, it's not the same thing, there's, there's difference between nationalistic and, and uh, democratic socialism, but, um, <clears throat> Uh, Donald Trump is arguing, you know, that we need to band together and, you know, push out the people that are not, not good and, you know, work, work 10 times harder to make everyone rich. And, and it's very, it plays outside of what the normal political agendas of, you know, tax this and, and, you know, I'm for abortion and, you know, I'm against gays and all the other random stuff. The, the the political stuff and the other, and they're arguing the same you know they are political but they're they're different they started a lot of these things they're talking about the things before everyone else was or, or they're the only ones arguing for these things and they're just so loud now I mean not that they're yelling but that people want to hear that way more than they want to hear what's been said for the past fifty years um, and it's always either been we're under attack we need to attack. We, we are starving or, you know, something, something is always bad that needs to be fixing, but it's always different. And the, the best way to do that, the best way to get people to vote for you is to, is to just, you know, be a little seedy, be a little manipulative. And, and that's, I hate that. I hate it so much. So th the way all of it ties into corruption is the entire electoral process uh, the, the way the voting blocks work or the way they count the delegates and the way people can pledge their, their, their um, uh, they can pledge their support for a candidate and then whoever gets the most delegates becomes the nomination or nominee and they don't have to worry about the people's vote at all. So you pander and you, you can buy votes and there's people that have flat out admitted to bribing people and uh, offering them things that they want. And a lot of people say that somebody like Donald Trump is immune to um, bribery. He, he's immune to corruption. That doesn't work if you understand that corruption isn't about money. It's about things you want. And one of the things you want is influence. When One of the things you need to get an election is votes. And the, the way you get votes is endorsements. It's... Uh, you know, um, manpower, you know, hours and hours of people, thousands of hours of just people, you know, making stuff or spreading information, you know, calling people, getting, getting uh, scheduling, you know, filling a stadium with 500,000 people is a lot of work. You need pe people to work for you and they're not going to work for free. And even if you pay them, that's still a form of you know, I'm, I, if I paid somebody $500,000, they're going to do a lot of stuff for me. But if I were to pay one person $500,000 uh, to do anything, they might do something that gets 500,000 people. I could have given them all $1, but this one guy gave me an endorsement. And now I get a whole bunch of people supporting me just because that one guy supports me. And so you, it's not just money. Yeah, I mean, money is the main one because it's one of the money talks kind of thing, but uh, money walks or however you want to word it. Corruption isn't just about money. It's about influence. It's about think giving somebody or offering somebody something they want. And, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's actually really funny that somebody that's always talking about the art of the deal uh, would say he's above corruption when he flat out admits that there is so much more to it than just money. Uh, the idea of bartering uh, of it's, you say you don't want it you know it's not worth anything you try to devalue it but then you're not just talking money you're talking about you know i'll i'll, I'll it's not trading because it's bartering but it's like i'll do this for you if you do this for me and that is a major part of politics and that's one of the reasons people are so mad about corruption but admitting on national television that you have bribed politicians to get what you want is kind of bad and that's one of the reasons i don't like him but there's a whole bunch of people that do stuff like that. There, there's people that are just egregious about it. And uh, that's one of the reasons I don't like the idea of money or anyone being able to influence the people that are making decisions. You can make your argument. There's a very big difference between arguing something and offering something. Um, because one is manipulation, coercion, bribery. And the other one is just trying to say, you know, think of the children 
and but you know actually meaning it not saying that you know you're going to break their legs if you so he doesn't do what you want um <clears throat> which probably has happened but not not from me i didn't do that um so uh to summarize because this is getting long corruption is about offering somebody something or or being offered something you know in government i mean uh government corruption is when people are just people but they're also kind of failing at being, you know, if you're not doing your job. I mean, your job isn't to do your own thing. It's to do the thing for them. And when you when you put them as a part of us, but your us is exclusive to the people that agree with you, and now you're only doing it because you want more of it, and now you want more power, and you keep it in their family, and you make millions and millions of dollars on these deals that your family owns because you just gave them a tax break, which has happened... Um, it's, it, it gets into the, into the, the territory of conspiracy theory, which I also don't like, but, uh, there are a lot of instances that have been proven that say, you know, this politician had somebody either related to them or who was a business partner, partner with them. And they're like, yeah, I'm going to appoint you in this position to look over all of these other companies. And I own some of those companies. So obviously, you know, look out for mine, um, and no one, no one noticed for a long time, and they made hundreds of millions of dollars. And it's like, oh, thanks. Now, you do it for me, and it's it's very problematic, and I don't like it. And I think that there needs to be an overhaul when dealing with corruption, because corruption is what messes everything up. You can have differing ideas on how to solve a problem. You can say, you know, I don't believe that this is true, but we can still talk about it and work in a way that solves everyone's problems equally, even though we might not agree. And then you have people that are just going to do whatever the heck they want and destroy everything. So corruption, multifaceted, interesting. Uh, this wasn't as co 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 coherent as I was hoping. Uh, I apologize for that. But corruption is just bad. Corruption, I think, is one of the worst things about the government right now, about people in general, is they're very easily corruptible because you can. anyone has, again, everyone has something they want. And it's not just money. Money is easy. Money is the simplest one. It's like, oh, here's $100,000, do whatever I want. Uh, but also it's like, hey, your your daughter, you know, your daughter, and then you say something horrible. It's like, okay, I'll do whatever you want. That's another thing. It's like, or I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get her into a good school. That's a pretty big offer. Hey, your daughter wants to be a doctor, right? Well, my family, is, is one of my friends is on the board of directors at this school. She's in if you do this thing for me. That is a big thing. So I just want people to understand that corruption, it's not just about being above bribery. There, there are so many more things valuable than money. Money is almost worthless to a lot of people besides the most basic needs. Money gives you the most basic needs for a lot of people. They need food. If you need food, that's not the same thing as if you want an extra yacht. Um, or if you want a $100 million company or whatever. So... I, I don't know. I'm starting to ramble. So I'm going to end this video here. Uh, I really hope that it explains something. I don't know. And I hope that uh, it was entertaining or educational. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next one. And peace.